In this video, we will be going over the next homologous series or group of organic compounds called alcohols. Alcohols are a homologous series, okay, so a group of organic compounds, a family of organic compounds identified by a hydroxyl functional group. Now, what is a hydroxyl functional group? A hydroxyl functional group is an OH group. So as soon as you see an organic compound like this one over here, and you see an OH attached to one of the carbons, you know we are dealing with an alcohol. The suffix of alcohols is OL. So when you see the IUPAC, the IUPAC name of a compound, and it ends in OL, you know you are dealing with an alcohol. So over here, we can see that I have an organic compound. You can see that it has two carbons, and you can see that the name of this is ethanol eth because two carbons in the main chain and it ends in ol because of the hydroxyl group the oh over there this over here is what we call the structural formula of the functional group of an alcohol now remember a functional group is a bond an atom or a group of atoms in this case it's essentially a group of atoms that give the homologous series its chemical and physical properties. So it helps us identify the homologous series that we're talking about. So again, as soon as you see this, you know it's an alcohol. And here's the general formula for alcohol. So as soon as I know the number of carbons, I can work out how many H's we should see in this compound. And just to quickly recap what we should have done already, if you're doing the groups in an order, this is the functional group, structural formula of the functional group of alkanes and the general formula for alkanes. Remember, saturated hydrocarbons, single bonds between the carbon atoms. This is for alkenes, okay, double bond and the general formula. Alkynes, triple bond and the general formula. Haloalkanes, same thing, functional group, general formula. And then over here, we've got the alcohols, structural formula of the functional group, the name of the functional group is a hydroxyl group. So you could be asked a question like, what is the name of the functional group of an alcohol? You must give the name hydroxyl. So I've already touched on naming alcohols, but the parent chain or the main chain, very, very, very important, must contain the carbon atom with the OH group. So the carbon atom with the OH group can never be in a branch. It has to be a part of the main chain. And when we number the carbons, remember one of the things that we do when we name organic compounds is we number the carbons in the chain. So we go one, two, three, four, or we number it in reverse, one, two, three, four, depending on certain sets of rules. When we number the carbons in the main chain for alcohols, we have to number it so that the OH group, the hydroxyl group, takes preference over any alkyl groups. So what do I mean by alkyl groups? That's your methyl branch, your ethyl branch. So we number the main chain so that the OH group, the hydroxyl group, has the lowest number. So this one on the screen is a very basic example. You can see that the main carbon chain over here has one, two, three, four carbons. When we choose how to number the chain, we can either do one, two, three, four. If we choose to number it this way, the OH group is on the third carbon, or we can number it the other way, one, two, three, four. I hope you can see that this way makes the OH group have a lower number. So our name is going to be how many carbons in the main chain? Four. So we're going to go butan, two, ol. So but, but, that tells me that there's four carbons in the main chain, Two, it tells me that on carbon number two, that's where the OH group is found. And OL, it ends in OHL, OL because we're dealing with an alcohol. Okay, there we go. OL for alcohol. So here's a list of some of our basic alcohols, just easy ones that to name. So meth, anol, over here we can see meth is one carbon and OL, it's an alcohol. And take note how there's no numbers in this name. The reason why, same thing with ethanol, is because the OH group can only go on the first carbon. So because it only has the potential, the, the, it's only possible for it to go on carbon number one, we don't put the one in the name. I hope that makes sense. So as you can see here, there's only one carbon, therefore the OH can only go on carbon one. So it's just methanol. Same thing with ethanol, and that might confuse people because you might think, okay, but ma'am, over here, it's on the second carbon, one, two. 
Remember, that's not how it works. We number the carbons in the main chain to make the OH group have the lowest number. So no matter how you draw it, this is carbon number one. That's carbon number two. If I draw it the other way around, this is carbon one and that is carbon number two. So both of these are representing the exact same molecule, ethanol. Because it can only go on carbon one, we don't put the one in the name. But if you look at propan one ol versus propan two ol, prop means three, three carbons in the main chain. The reason why we put numbers in these ones is because look at propan one ol versus propan two ol. It's very different. Here, the OH group is clearly on the first carbon. We'll go carbon one, two, and three. But it also has the potential to be on the second carbon. Carbon one, two, and three. No matter how you name this, one, two, and three, it's going to be on the second carbon. So it's two completely separate, diff um, very different molecules. One thing I do want to go over that is so important, and I see matrix every year making the same mistake, and you lose a lot of marks in your paper if you do it like this, is the difference between naming alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. So how you name alkenes and alkynes and where you put the number in the chain is different from where you put the number if you are naming an alcohol and some of the other groups that follow, like ketones and so on. So let's start with this molecule top left over here. Each of these have four carbons in it. This one, you can see, single bonds between the carbon atoms in the main chain. This is an alkane, so it is butane. Okay, just normal butane, but meaning four. The one at the bottom, four carbons in the main chain, still four carbons. There's a double bond. We number the main chain or number the carbons in the main chain so that the double bond gets the lowest possible number. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. As you can see, I numbered it this way because then the double bond comes after the first carbon. But take note with regards to how you name this molecule. You need to indicate after which carbon the double bond comes. There's four carbons in the main chain. So what you do is you start with but, but, that's where you chop the name off. You insert the number here, but, one, then you put a dash, in. So that's how you would name it if it were an alkene. So butes, because butes means four, one, because the double bond comes after carbon one, ending in en, because it's an alkene, it's got double bonds. Take note how this is different to the, this example here with the alcohol. Four carbons in the main chain. So yes, it will start with but. But when you name an alcohol, same thing later on for when you name a ketone. This is very important. You write the name as if it were an alkane. So it would, it would be butane, right? Because four carbons in the main chain. You take away the E. You put the number where you find the functional group. So in this chain, it's one, two, three, four. The OH group is attached to the first carbon. So butan, one, ol. Very important. Just take, a, take a, a very good look at how these names are different. This is but one in. This is butan one ol. So basically this stuff replaces the E as if it were an alkane. You just take away the E and then you replace it with the one ol. What I see people do wrong in their exam is they go like this. They go but one ol. That's incorrect. It must be butan one ol. I hope you can see the difference. So let's try this one over here. We need to look for the main chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. The carbon atom attached to the OH group is part of the main chain, so we're all good. We need to number the carbons to make sure that this one has the lowest number. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I had to do it backwards, that would not be the lowest way of numbering. Just take a look. One, two, three, four. You see the red numbering is not going to work because four is bigger than three. So we're not going to go with the red numbering. We're going to go with the purple. And our name, how many carbons in the main chain? Six. So it's hex. If it were an alkane, it would be hexane. But it's not an alkane. It's an alcohol. So you chop off the E, add three, ol. Why three? Because on carbon three, you've got the OH group. Hexan three, ol. If you take a look at this example over here, they're giving this to you in its condensed structural formula. So as soon as you see an OH like that, an OH, you need to take note, that means that it is an alcohol. 
If it makes you feel better to draw this out, you can, but I think it's a little bit of a waste of time. So you're going to count it's one, two, three. One, two, three. On the third carbon, that is where the OH group is attached, but that numbering wouldn't make sense, right? Because that would mean that the OH group has a big number. Let's try and number it in the reverse way. So it would be one, two, three. Three. There we go. That makes the OH group have a lower number. There's three carbons in the main chain. So propan one ol. Essentially what this molecule looks like is, is this. This carbon has three hydrogens. So like this. Then it's attached to a carbon here with two hydrogens like that. And then it's attached to another carbon with two hydrogens and the OH group. Just like that. So it would be one, two, three. Propan one ol. Here's another example. The examples are numbered a bit weird. It doesn't matter. We need to find the main chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The carbon that is attached to the OH group is a part of the longest chain. So that's all good. Even if I had to do this, that is still seven in the main chain. So seven is the longest chain. So you highlight the longest chain. It always helps you to see it like that. That makes it easier for us to say, okay, cool. Then this is a branch. This is a methyl branch. Why methyl? Because it's got one carbon in it. And this is the hydroxyl group. Okay. The OH group. Now, remember what the naming rules say for alcohols. We number the main chain so that the OH group has the lowest number. It takes preference over the alkyl groups. So what that means is it doesn't matter that there's an alkyl group, a methyl group, an ethyl group, whatever, in this case methyl, doesn't matter that there's an ethyl group here close to the end of the chain. It does not make sense to number the main chain like this, one, two, and so on. Because if I were to name it like this, the OH has a very high number, six. So let's try the other way around. There we go, the other way around. Now the OH group is attached to the second carbon. It makes it have a lower number. So how do we name this? Remember when we do our name, we do have to mention the alkyl groups, the substituents, the branches first in the name. So it's going to be 6-6-methyl because on carbon number six, there's a methyl group. Methyl group means one carbon. Remember, dash between numbers and letters. 6 methyl hip tan 2 all. Hept means seven. There's seven carbons in the main chain. Two because the OH group is on the second carbon and OL because it's an alcohol. In the next video, we briefly go over the difference between primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols. I'll see you then. Bye everyone.